Mouldy, neglected houses, queuing for hours and unaffordable rent. Really considering, is it worth it? I feel completely helpless. Too many students and not enough homes. This is student housing in the UK today. It's January and these uni students have been queuing out here in the freezing cold for hours. You got here at 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> We've had our flatmates here since about seven. But it's not for an event or a social. They're all desperate to find somewhere to live for the next academic year, still nine months away. Our standards have kind of slowly dropped. You've kind of got people saying, like, as soon as they get one view in, they're just going to put money down straight away. Angus and his friends have been searching for months. We've been looking since no November, you think? Yeah. Consistently looking as well, not just every now and again. It's not the first time they've been here. This lettings agency is owned by the Student Union and back in December it released 200 properties on the same day. Those who missed out are back again. Is it this one? I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. What does it say to you that there are this many students queuing up to find a property? We we'll, would quite like somewhere to live <laughs> um, and there's not enough houses by a long way. Yeah. Angus isn't wrong. There are nearly 3 million students at university in the UK, and numbers have been pretty steadily increasing for 20 years. In 2022, an estimated 1.6 million students needed accommodation, but there were only 700,000 rooms in purpose-built student blocks, which means that more than half of all students had to find accommodation in the private rental market. What have you found of your house hunt so far? Either it's too expensive, but it's nice, or we can afford it and it's rotten. <laughs> the hope is that by securing a place through the student union, these students can avoid living in dodgy housing. So we're going to leave these guys in the queue for now, and we're going to check in with a third year student who'll be able to show us what kind of private rental they could end up with. I went to meet Sophie whose house has serious problems. Hi, Sophie. Hi like, we'd sent them an email, like, multiple emails saying, we're worried that the ceiling's going to fall in, and then it did. Sophie and her flatmates warned their estate agents when the roof started leaking water every time it rained. There was, it was leaking from the ceiling, and then it was all streaming down here and all streaming down in this. It was the same thing happening in the bathroom as well. The estate agents eventually put up scaffolding to fix it, but weeks went by and repairs were never made. And when they came back from Christmas break... The whole upstairs just stank of moulds and the ceiling was falling through. This is not what they were expecting when they first found the flat. It was a little bit expensive, but we were willing to pay a little bit extra because it just seemed like such a lovely flat. But since then, the list of problems has continued to grow. There was just virtually just like a layer of like, like wet mud sinking into the carpet. So they ripped up the carpet from there to there. Mould has spread all around Sophie's bedroom and the bathroom. You never really feel clean when you shower here. I mean, yeah, I've just resorted to showering at the gym. What's it like living in a house with a hole in the roof? I don't want to be here. I don't want to stay in the flat. I don't want to, and if I am, I don't want to go upstairs. What does the estate agent say to you when you contact them? They essentially just apologise for our distress and they say, we'll have a look. And I mean, they have been round to look at it, but that seems to be where it ends. At this point, Sophie says she's almost given up begging the estate agent for repairs and has asked the council for help. I feel completely helpless. I think it comes down to them thinking that students are naive. So, I mean, we're paying so much money because housing is so expensive. And to live in a place like this, it just, it's, just seems absolutely ludicrous. But do you have any other option? No. Like, there's nothing else we could do, so we have to we have to put up with it, really. Weeks after the ceiling fell through, repairs are finally underway at Sophie's house. But as she waits for results, the hole gets bigger and the flat gets colder. Back at the queue, Angus has made it to the front, and the SU Lettings Agency has put him in touch with an estate agent for a potential viewing. Hello, we're uh, interested in the property on Elm Lane. What's the property like? It's not my dream home, but it's good, good enough. <laughs> it's not unusual for students in the UK to be searching for housing months before they need to move. But in most places, the hunt is starting sooner and the rent is becoming increasingly unaffordable. Now the queue has finally cleared, I want to find out what the lettings agency makes of all this. So some students have been queuing out the front here since 4am this morning. Why? We worked really hard to get some communications out to say, like, please do not queue. We, we've got an online system where they can view the available properties. This is the first year it's been like this. I think it's indicative of the housing crisis in Bristol. Bristol isn't the only city struggling to provide places for its students to live. So why is this happening? 
Experts have told me there are simply too many students and not enough homes. While universities are expanding, less student housing is being built and landlords are leaving the market for more attractive options like Airbnb and professional rentals. But a shortage of housing can take years to fix and students are already feeling the pinch. We're off to York now to meet another student who knows the struggle of finding somewhere to live and her whole degree is on the line. When Sabiksha and her friends started looking for a home for second year, they couldn't believe the spiralling cost of housing in York. We were finding properties that were extortionate for me. It was 179, 181, around that benchmark, and that was the cheaper properties. And if you were to take that property, how much money would you have to live off? £15 left for the entire term. Maintenance loans are available to students in the UK based on their family income. Sabiksha is receiving the highest amount possible. I should be able to pay my rent and have surplus money on the side to get me through the weeks. I've had to spill a lot of my life story to people and been like, listen, I, my parents and I, we can't afford this and I can't afford this. But what were your options? It's literally to the point where I've thought about dropping out. I love the course I'm doing, I love the university, but I'm really considering, is it worth it? What would that have meant to you to have to drop out? To be honest, like a great deal, my parents are both refugees. They came to this country to provide for a future for me and my sister. It would mean a lot for them to see me on that stage, graduating, and that's all they've worked for in life. Yeah, it's, it wasn't a possibility, but it was something I was clearly thinking about. How much time do you think you've spent worrying about money? Every day every single day. Luckily for Sabiksha, she eventually found a house she could afford. It just meant I didn't have to drop out of uni. It meant that I could pursue a higher education. It meant that, like, at the end of the day, it meant that my mum and dad would have their dreams fulfilled. And this house is just for your second year of university. Yeah. Does that mean you have to do it all again the next year? Yeah, I'm just so scared I'm going to have to pay it all over again. Uni studying is stressful, but compared to financial stress, it's really non-existent, to be honest. The government has announced it's going to increase the maintenance loan in England by 2.8%, but that's not even close to matching soaring levels of inflation. Sabiksha sorted for a year at least. Sophie is still waiting on repairs, but what about Angus? You just went to your viewing, how was it? It didn't happen, it got cancelled basically when we got there. It's quite annoying. <laughs> yeah, they're fed up, so. So what happens now? Keep on looking, yeah, keep on going. <laughs> The search for student housing isn't going to get easier anytime soon. And as the country grapples with the worst housing crisis seen in decades, students may be left queuing for hours, living with crumbling ceilings, or weighing up whether university is even worth it at all. University of York told us they're taking steps to support students through measures worth £6 million and called the government's maintenance loan increase woefully inadequate. University of Bristol told us that student housing is a top priority and they're working with the council, developers and other universities in the area to support more quality and affordable housing for students. And the National Residential Landlords Association said no one should ever have to put up with unsafe or unhealthy accommodation. Students have just the same rights as any other private tenants.